action. I just helped one of my clients yesterday who's a director in Hollywood prepare for his next for his next project. And I was talking to him about the words that he uses at the beginning and at the end of every thing that he directs. And so I think it's funny I use action coming into our time together. I'm Dr. Robin McKay. Welcome to the last episode in the actualization zone of our weather report. Things are changing around here and I can't wait to drop the news tomorrow. Uh, but if you are here with me live for this this energy report, welcome. Say hello in the comments. I'd love to say hi back to you. If you're watching the recording, leave your leave that in the comments too, so I can say hi back to you there as well. Um, so the way this works every week is I come in here and I've I've tuned into the energetics of the week. I've tuned into kind of what the guides are wanting to bring forward, and I want to deliver that information to you in just a couple of minutes. And then maybe less than a couple of minutes, actually. But and then I want to share a couple of um, opportunities that are coming forward, a couple of announcements I have um, that are going on in my world that you may want to take advantage of and step into. So welcome. It is Tuesday, February 21st. One of my favorite days of the year is tomorrow, 222. And there is going to be a big announcement in our Facebook group tomorrow, as well as in all of my social media about some things that are shifting. Um, but before we get to that in my announcements, let's go ahead and dive in. The way that this works is that I, um, I am a clear channel. I have been so since I was a little kid. I also have a PhD in psychology, so I'm always looking through the lens of um, social and emotional well-being. I'm also looking through the lens of just how can we maximize our potential? How can we actualize our greatest hopes, dreams, and desires? And my guides are here with me now. In fact, um, Isis has been contributing to our conversations this morning. So the guides are here. I'm here. You're here. Welcome. And so the, the question that came through, <clears throat> excuse me, this morning was this, are you too well-adjusted for your own good? Are you too well adjusted for your own good? What I will find usually is for spiritual entrepreneurs, leaders, and CEOs who are who are intuitive and intelligent, who have the capacity to channel all kinds of information, all kinds of frequencies. One of the things that we share in common is that we are too well adjusted for our own good. In fact, um, that shows up in our personality profiles. If you haven't taken the NEO, by the way, yet, my personality assessment, I strongly recommend that you do that uh, to really understand your personality in, in the framework of what you're meant to be doing as a thought leader, as a messenger, as a way shower in this world. It's very important for you to get that information about who you are and why you are the way you are so that you're, you clear out any, any barriers or any blocks to you fully expressing your gifts in the world. And um, along the way, as I've studied gifted and talented girls and women, what I've come to realize, and I learned this from my academic mentor years ago, is that gifted and talented girls and women are often too well adjusted for our own good. In fact, we've deployed quite a bit of our intellectual resources in order to be able to fit in into the world. We've become chameleons, shapeshifters, figuring out how we need to be in order to help people other feel comfortable around us, to help people feel at home with us to put our own needs, desires, goals, and dreams on the back burner in the service of other people's goals, dreams, and desires. And if that's you, uh, you're in the right place. And the message today, I was connecting with Isis just before we came on and she, I pulled these cards with her assistance and advising and they're pretty powerful today. So let's go ahead and dive in. This is the energy that I want us to focus on and work with this week. The first one is in the service of the question, are you too well adjusted for your own good? Is this, don't dim to fit in. These are Rebecca Campbell's work your light cards. I love them. So another question that you can ask yourself today, this is a great time to ask this, is how are you dimming your light in order to fit in? 
on a practical level, that can look like, how are you couching your words? How are you hiding what you're doing behind the scenes? Where are you performing in your life in order to create the, the illusion that you are well-adjusted, that you are part of the community? Where are you guarding against being rejected by the community? And in so doing, you're dimming your light and you're not fully expressing who you came here to be. So where are you dimming your light? Where are you being too well-adjusted for your own good? That's the, that's the kickoff card for this week. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? So <clears throat> the reason this is so important is because right now I believe that, that people who see themselves as way showers, as thought leaders, as messengers, as people who are here for a bigger purpose, not from an ego perspective, but you just know in your bones that you're here for a bigger purpose. One of the things that we have become very adept at doing is ignoring the niggles, ignoring the calls to deepen your connection with your spiritual gifts, ignore, ignoring the calls to deepen your connection with your intuition. And we say things like, I'll do it later. It's not the right time. What will so-and-so think? How does this fit in? And we start denying the very call that we are hearing in our souls. When you start denying the calling of your soul, you know you're at the precipice of a transformation. How long you choose to deny the call of your soul, that is a personal choice. There are some of us who will say, I couldn't deny it any longer. And certainly that has been the case for me throughout my life. When there have been pivot points in my life, and I have been pressing against them when I know that I know that I know that it's time to leave a relationship, when I know that I know that I know that it's time to go in a different direction in my work. If I resist that, it's going to create a tension and a push and pull with my wealth consciousness, with my relationships, with my connection, with all that is. But the sooner that I lean into that call and I say, yes, even if I'm not sure what happens next, that's when magic unfolds in my life. And that's when really I know that I'm back on course with what my soul's mission is at the time. Maybe you can relate to that. So the next card that came forward today is trust the niggle, trust the niggle. And you can ask yourself this question, what is that niggling feeling trying to tell me? I'll give an example. You know, I'm teaching the Akashic Records level one certification program in a couple of weeks. Uh, actually, it's under two weeks. It's March 4th and 5th. And there, there are many people actually who have been really drawn to this work. They, they feel called to the Akashic Records. And yet they dig their heels in and say, no, it's not the right time. No, I've already studied with somebody else. No, 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 no. That is a resistance to the call. But that niggling feeling that they're having, that they're meant to be in the class when they respond to the call and say yes, that's when that's actually a portal for what's next for their soul's path. So I don't know if that's you, but if it is, pay attention to the niggle. And if it's something else, if there's some other thing that you know that you're meant to be doing, but you're ignoring the niggle, go back into the niggle and use that as an invitation to deepen, to deepen the questioning, to deepen the, the interactions with that communication that you're receiving from your higher self and your soul. You would think when you see this next card, you would think that I deliberately pulled these out of the deck, but these came out the way that I do is I shuffle and I pull and I pull and I pull. And this one, here it is, answer the call. Answer the call. You don't have to wait for a signee or sign. You can just answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? Interestingly, most of the people who I work with can say, I know that I'm being called to be a messenger. I know that I'm a way shower. I know that I'm a thought leader. They have no problem identifying who they are or what they're meant to be doing. That's not the problem, is it? The problem is overcoming, overriding the programming about being too well adjusted, overriding the programming of shape-shifting and navigating and couching and hiding 
and worrying about what it's going to be like to be in the spotlight, worrying about what it's going to be like when people actually hear your message. So that's the tension is the, what happens after, you know, I saw a meme recently had five blackbirds sitting on a wire. And the, the question was there, there were five blackbirds sitting on the wire, four of them decide to fly away. How many are left on the wire? In the next frame, all five of them are sitting on the wire. Why? Because deciding and taking action are two different steps. You can decide something, but if you don't take action in the service of your decision, you're in no man's land. You're still sitting on the wire. So just because you know what you're meant to be doing, and I have heard this over and over in my life, Women will come in and they will say, I know I'm meant to be a messenger. I know I'm meant to do the work that you're doing or like the work that you're doing. And I say, then why aren't you doing it? Well, and then they will go into the story. And I say this lovingly. I certainly have been there myself. So it's not, this isn't, this is to be expected really. But part of the evolution of a thought leader's journey is to decide and then fully step into the calling. And that's the scary part. The good news is that you're not meant to do that by yourself because as soon as you answer your calling, the mentor appears. The mentor appears in the form of a spiritual teacher, a guide, a coach, someone who has developed mastery in that area that you are on the cusp of. But here's the message, answer the call. Answer the call. That's it. Last one. What's on the other side of answering the call? It's this. It's an awakening. There are energetic upgrades. There's a new way of being in the world. There's an integration that takes place that is waiting for you on the other side of answering the call. But those energetic upgrades cannot come through. The integrations cannot come through the new aspects of your consciousness cannot come through in the system as it currently is. This is one of the reasons it's so important to answer the call. Pick up the phone, say hello, allow the upgrades to come through. Woo, this is a powerful reading today, people. What landed for you? I feel like for some of you, it struck you right here in the heart. All right. So that's your reading this week. Take it seriously. And the changes that you feel are on the cusp will drop in when you take it seriously, when you answer the call. But you cannot become the fullest expression of who you are as a messenger, as a way show, or as a thought leader in terms of channeling the highest frequencies of, of information, the highest frequencies of consciousness. You cannot fully express yourself if you're not going to pick up the phone. So pick up the phone. All right. Okay. That's your reading for today. Now, I mentioned a couple of things. If you haven't taken the NEO assessment yet, I want you to enroll in that. The reason that that's important is because you really do need to understand your personality characteristics, how you are wired, and what makes you unique in the wider community. Why are you being called to be a thought leader? Why are you being called as a messenger? There is something that shifts energetically and intellectually when you can see it in black and white. All of the top spiritual leaders are taking this right now. Jennifer Longmore has taken it. Elise Bassine has taken it. Louisa Havers has taken it. All of these people that we know within the community of spiritual entrepreneurs and leaders are taking this assessment. Christina Rice has taken it. We talked about that on her podcast a couple of weeks ago. Take the NEO. The way that you do that is you go to my website, drrobinmckay.com forward slash soul aligned. So take the NEO, get signed up for that. And the other thing is that you have an opportunity to step into learning about and receiving the activations from the Akashic Records to become certified at level one in the Soul Journeys method. I am teaching that. March 4th and 5th of this year, we teach it via Zoom. It's a two-day intensive. 
Uh, we are still in early bird pricing until tomorrow. So you wanna get in that. And I will pop that link in the comments as well. That's at drrobinmckay.com forward slash ARC and the number one. So get yourself enrolled in that. But do yourself a favor, do all of us a favor, please. On behalf of your soul community, say yes, answer the call. Stop hiding your light. Stop being in the toggle between who I am now and who I'm becoming and just answer the call. It's very, very simple. All right, big love. Stay tuned for an announcement tomorrow. I'm going to be coming back in here. I don't remember what time I've got that scheduled for, but uh, keep an eye out for the notification around that. We are going to be unfurling something brand new for our community, and I cannot wait to share it with you. Ciao, ciao.